Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here and the When You're Worth podcast show. Just We've been doing the When You're Worth Academy. It's a 12-part series where I'm just taking people through the psychology and the confidence to be able to earn an extra $500 to $1,000 a year in extra fee income over and above what you're doing now with new business. Okay, and that's what we're really focusing on. And what we know, it's all about having confidence um, and confidence comes when we know our scripts really well, we know how to respond really well, and of course, having strong points of difference. And I, I've just been digging quite a bit deeper into the psychology behind discounting and uh, having so we can have a full understanding that when someone says, but the other agent is cheaper, what is really going on? And when you can really understand the truth, you can then leverage it, okay? So there's just a few thoughts that I just wanted to go around. And, and particularly after we've just finished our Top Growth National Tour, I did a whole session on the nine scripts to be, but the other agent is cheaper. Most people agree, but the other agent is cheaper is the type of the type of objection you're probably going to get thrown, okay? And, and so I just want to go through and understanding some layers here. So I want at the end of this podcast, you are going to understand what's going on so much better and clarity around the truth, because most agents get this wrong. Now, firstly, let's just let, put some layers to this. Firstly, understand that we work in real estate. Therefore, real estate is one of those areas or zones where you negotiate on fees. So for example, um, you go down to the supermarket and buy some groceries. It's not normal for you to negotiate. In fact, you'd look pretty stupid if you did. You're not going to negotiate with a cashier or the self-serve uh, machine uh, on a discount, all right? Uh, because you saw it cheaper at another supermarket like Audi's. You're not going to do that, okay? You don't do that. You won't do it at McDonald's on a Big Mac. You won't do it at Target. You won't do it at the supermarket, all righty? Because it's not acceptable in those places. But there are certain industries where negotiating is acceptable and it's what you do. Real estate is one of those. Now, of course, in property management, we're tagged real estate, but it really started in sales, okay, and trying to negotiate sales commission. So property management is one of those. You're, you're a real estate agent. You know, we can argue over that term. You're a real estate agent. Your fees are meant to be negotiable, all right? Just like if you're going to buy something on Facebook Marketplace, well, you're usually never going to pay full price, are you? So, Facebook Marketplace is a place where you negotiate. That's what you do. Um, you jump on a plane and go to Bali, you know, and, and if you're going to buy a new bag or ladies a new dress or something, well, you're in bargaining mode, but you wouldn't bargain on a bag or a dress at Target, would you, or Kmart or wherever you go, right? So again, real estate, people are negotiating because that's what you do. So it's a game and people come to it as a game. It's exciting to them because they don't get to do it too often. So understand is that people generally, if they're going to negotiate, it's going to be at a certain point in the journey between the inquiry, the first time you speak with them, right up to when they sign a deal. It's, it's normally on a part of that journey. And what we need to understand and do and do some unlearning here is that when we get, but the other agent is cheaper, um, it's it we we wrongly as agents or property managers or BDMs think if I don't comply, they're going to go to that other agent. It's incorrect. We see it like a fork in the road. If we don't comply, they'll go down the other fork to the cheaper agent, but it's not. Don't see it like that. It's actually, they're actually saying in their mind, this is what they've come to. I'm going to choose you. You're the agent I want to go to now. So uh, to get to signing the agreement, we're going, to, we're going to talk about fees now. And this is the last step before I agree and confirm I want to go with you. So in the prospect's mind, it's a last step. It's just a speed hump that they need to get over to actually then go, right, all right, let's do the deal. They're about to make a decision on you. So see it as a, a green light. It's a buying signal, okay? So they've already made a decision on you. So when they say, but the other agent is cheaper, they've simply done a little bit of research and got no intention of going to that other agent, but they're trying to get their fees, but they want you. They want you at their fees. So now it's simply 
a negotiation situation, all right? Is either they negotiate their fees and win or you negotiate your fees and win, but someone's going to win and a deal is going to be signed. And I liken this um, like a, you know, a peacock, a male peacock fluffs up their colorful feathers and does this little ritual and all of this stuff before he gets down to business with the female. Um, this is similar in that uh, it's a ritual. It's it's they're negotiating. There's a need to negotiate here before a deal is signed because you work in real estate. Therefore, let's dance. So please understand it's the dance of negotiation that you have to get good at. And so knowing your responses are really, really important. Now, one of the responses at this point to also diffuse the bluff, they're bluffing when they say, but the other agent is cheaper or the other agent will do this, they are bluffing, all right? And to then pull uh, the pin on that bluff, you might say something, well, may I ask then, you, you're obviously about to make a choice, may I ask them why you haven't chosen them already, all right? And oh, well, because they may not do this or they don't do that or whatever. So you start pulling the pin and taking the rug out under them why they haven't already chosen them, okay? So that then will then lead to some interesting discussion and it's going to help you, all right? But please understand this. We're going to go in deeper now. Is that in a marketplace, you're up against regularly maybe five or six other agents, all right? So your marketplace or competing in a marketplace might be regularly against 80% of the time certain agents, 20% of the time, it may be less commonly with others, all right? But in a marketplace, those agents competing with each other, they don't go in blindly. Agents don't compete not knowing what the other agent's fees are. They do know. And because they're working, competing all the time, they've done their secret shopping on you. They know your fees. Don't think that they don't know. And you know what their fees are, right? Very rarely is there an agent in a marketplace competing against other agents that don't know what's going on. They're just ignorant. Ignorance generally isn't a factor. They've done the homework. They've done the secret shopping. They know your fees, whether it's secret shopping or they got a hold of your management agreement from another uh, 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 owner that didn't. I don't know. But they, they know what your fees are, okay? And when an agent comes into a marketplace and prices themselves, they don't just go, all right, these are my costs here, just add 30%. They always price themselves with where they believe they fit in the market, all righty? So they go out and they look at other agents out there. And let's just start with an analogy, Apple iPhone. So you know, Apple iPhone 15 or 16 or whatever, they come into the market and they've got a new iPhone and they look at the competitors out there. Look at Samsung and go, well, uh, Samsung is priced at $1,500, their Galaxy Note or whatever, uh, but we know we're better than them. We've got a better following than them. We've got a stronger product than them. We've got a, we, we've, we know our product is better and therefore, we're going to price it more at $1,800, okay? And Google may bring out their Pixel 10 and, and look at the market and go, well, Samsung's is at $1,500, and they're very strong, and they sell a lot. And Apple, my goodness me, people that follow Apple never leave. They're very, very strong, and they're at $1,800. So because we still need the cell phones, and we cannot compete on the level that Samsung does it or Apple does it, we're going to price ours at $1,300. So they price their product in accordance with what they believe it's worth, with their perception and how they think they fit in the market competing with the others, all right? So agents do the same. They come in, they price themselves accordingly to what they believe they are worth compared to other agents. An agent might come in and go, right, I need to price myself. All right, so XYZ real estate down the road, they've been there 20 years, they're really good. We very rarely hear of any complaints. They've got happy clients, um, very strong property managers never leave. Uh, they're really good. So they're at 9%, we'll, we'll price ourselves at 7.5%. And then they look down the road and they see um, a, a really bad agent that's a rogue agent, has got a bad reputation and go, we actually believe we're better than them. They're pricing themselves at 6% while well, we're right at 7.5%. But they always price themselves with what they believe they are worth according to their perception and how they think they fit in the market competing with others. 
All right. Because very rarely is an agent going to go, well, I know I could get 8% all day, every day. I'm going to charge six. Nobody does that. They always charge in line with what they believe they are worth. So if you've got an owner that says the other agent is cheaper, then you're likely competing against that agent that already knows what your fees are. And yet knowing what your fees are, they're still pricing themselves cheaper. They've already done the price comparison. They've already done the worth comparison against you and they've priced themselves cheaper. And so you need to simply reveal the fact with words, look, Mr. Smith, we're dealing with these agents all the time and they've already secret shopped us or they know what our fees are and we know what their fees are too. And despite them knowing that we're charging more, they've still priced themselves less. Look, quite frankly, they know that they're not on our service level. They know they cannot deliver the same as us on our service level. So all they've simply done is priced, they've lowered their price or they've adjusted their price in line with what they believe they're worth. Because if they honestly sat down and if they believed they were as good as us, they know what we're charging, but if they actually believed they were as good as us, they would be charging the same as us. And they're not. All right. So you simply just have to reveal that fact that agents price themselves in the market according to how they believe they are positioned in their quality against other agents. And it's revealing that. And you might then come up, well, look, Mr. Smith, um, look, I'm going to point something out obvious here. Did you know the difference between us and that other agent is only 1%? And you know what 1% is? It's just a cup of coffee a week. I, I have a cup of coffee a day. So this this discussion here is simply showing the owner. And I was doing top growth. We had a, a, a lady in Sydney, a BDM in Sydney, that during the one day event, after I'd revealed these scripts and revealed this price positioning uh, principle, um, she had a guy call up and threw at her, well, the, the, if you can match the other agent's fees, who's cheaper, I'll go with you. And she, she then pointed out this positioning, this pricing and positioning thing. And the guy said, oh my goodness, you're right. Yeah, the other agent is cheaper for a reason. And she completely destroyed the strength of his fee objection. And he, yeah, I, I see it. I want to go with an agent who's actually charging more because that agent obviously believes that they're worth more and do a better job if they're pricing themselves at that. All righty. So I just wanted to point this out, the obvious situation that we've got to get our mindset in line with what the uh with what how the prospects thinking and then be very careful that we don't have wrong mindsets or wrong thinking around this negotiation game when it comes to but the other agent is cheaper now of course i want you to get my book the pm fee script secrets i'll give you over nine Ten scripts just dealing with this particular issue here. Okay, I want you to learn that the book is free. Just pay for shipping. Go to stopdiscountingfees.com. And before I finish up, one of the things that I was really impressed with on the national tour, Inspection Express, um, with their points of difference, I was really, really blown away on how they've incorporated their virtual tours or virtual photography or that 360 degree photography around ingoings or entry or PCR reports and when the tenant leaves. And that's a very strong point of difference as well, because if I was in and negotiating with an owner and I showed him my ingoing inspection, Mr. Smith, that we do virtual tours and when the tenant leaves, we do a virtual tour and we can, we can um, uh, diffuse a tenant uh, who wants to, um, who wants to, um, disagree with us and take them out of the tribunal we can fix it really quickly with virtual virtual tours now the thing is is that your rivals are probably just doing um uh, they're going to be doing a written report and photos if you're doing a virtual tour as well explain it to the owner that you can pick things up very very quick to see on top of your written report and photos a virtual tour is going to pick up so much more they are going to be impressed with that and now, of course, you've got a stronger position when they come in and say, but the other agent is cheaper. Well, Mr. Smith, are they doing virtual tours inside their ingoing and outgoing inspections too? Well, Mr. Smith, that's why we're worth 1% more. And did you know 1% is only a cup of coffee? You see the strength and the confidence you can have. I want you to chat with, chat with Inspection Express. 
So just go to inspectionexpress.com.au um, and go and check out their product, but get yourself strong with points of difference. Remember, it's confidence that wins the day. It's an owner looking in your eye and knowing that you believe to be true what you're saying. And if you're confident and you believe it, they will believe it too. Confidence comes two ways, which is knowing your scripts, knowing how to respond strongly. I just did a whole podcast on that and having strong points of difference, okay? That's how you get confident, guys. It's been a great podcast show. Hope you got something out of here, but that's the truth around discounting, all righty? I look forward to you now. Again, join me in the Win Your Worth Academy. We go through 12 sessions to build up your confidence. Now, I just spoke to a lady yesterday, a name Simone. She attended our workshop. We're doing the same training in the Win Your Worth Academy. Um, she immediately went back and she's getting up to about about $1,000 a year now extra on top of what she was doing before per new property she's signing up. And she's about to roll those new fees up with her owners. Okay. So, uh, and she's in a small country town uh, with the same rivals charging the same fees as before, but she simply changed what she believed was true. Remember, you never win your worth, you only win what you believe that you're worth. So the Win Your Worth Academy is all about changing what you believe that you're worth. I'll increase what you believe about yourself. And once we change your worth, increase that up, you're going to get better fees. All righty. So you're welcome to book into my diary for a chat uh, at any time. Uh, winyourworthchat.com. Um, uh, I'm happy to have a chat. winyourworthchat.com. Happy to have a chat as well. If we can talk about and help you to get better fees of new business as well as current business and increase your fees with current clients. That's a different training altogether, but I'm here to help you. Thanks so much for your time and we'll see you in the next podcast episode.